Good morning friends. I hope everyone is doing well. I request everyone to watch my videos in a sequence for better understanding. In this video, I want to discuss about the simplification process of context-free grammar. In the earlier videos, we have discussed about what is a grammar and what is a how to construct a deterministic pushdown automata and how to construct a non-deterministic pushdown automata. I hope you have understood those concepts. So, we will discuss about the simplification of a grammar. If you have watched my video related to the Chomsky classification, the grammar is classified into four types. One is a regular grammar, context-free grammar, context-sensitive grammar, unrestricted grammar. If you have not watched that video, I request you to go and watch that video and come back to this video for better understanding. So, in that one, we have discussed that a grammar is useful for us to construct a a long ways okay because a long ways consists of a strings so from a grammar i can generate a string as all the strings if i combine i will get a long ways now we have even classified the grammars into four types now one of that category is a context free grammar we will even call it as a type 2 grammar how the context free grammar will be represented as as any grammar can be represented is in the form of alpha determines beta is it clear? Any grammar will consist of left hand side symbol and right hand side symbol. So, alpha determines beta if I take it as a grammar and then type 2 grammar will be in the form of alpha consists of variable or terminal because we can call it as a variable or we can call it as a non-terminal. Not terminal, it can be non-terminal. So, it is a variable or non-terminal. Okay, so alpha consists of a single non-terminal because the length of the alpha is equal to 1 and the beta consists of a variable or it is union. Okay, variable, union, terminal, clean closure. What is the meaning of variable, union, terminal? I can take a variable or I can take a terminal and clean closure means even I can take the length 0 which is epsilon. So, beta can consist of epsilon also or it can consist of a variable or a terminal or a combination of all these things of length anything. So, this is the representation or the form of a type 2 grammar which can be called as a context free grammar. Now, we will discuss why should we go for the simplification process. If we does not do the simplification what the problem will come. In the earlier video I have discussed about how to convert a regular grammar to a string. If you see that the simple, the process is very easy. Is it clear from a grammar? We have easily obtained a string. Okay. Now, when it comes to the context free grammar, it consists of useless symbols or so I can say that some of the productions of context free grammar because any grammar consists of set of productions. Is it clear? Let's take that I have S determines A, A, A determines A. I can call these are the, this grammar is a consists of two production. This is the production number one, this is the production number two. So, some of the productions of context free grammar are not useful and redundant. If they are not useful, why should we keep it? Is it clear? If they are not useful, obviously if you generate any string, that production will not be useful. So, if you have a, some production which is not useful, why should you keep it? You remove it. And redundant, redundant means if some like A, a determines A and then B determines A is there, then these two are redundant because when A can determine A, B can determine small A, it is a redundant. Why should we have these many productions? So, if you have a useless productions or redundant productions, reduce them. If you reduce them, it will be useful for us to in the generating the string from the grammar. Now, this process, simplification process consists of three steps, okay. To remove the useless productions and redundant productions, we have to follow the three steps. Let me discuss the three steps. So, eliminate First one is that you need to eliminate the epsilon productions. I think everyone know what is an epsilon production. Just now we have discussed that we right hand side can be of epsilon also. So, if I have A determines epsilon, we should remove it. And re remember one thing, whether 
a long wave consists of epsilon. Yes, there is a possibility that a long wave consists of epsilon. So when you are removing the epsilon productions, understand one point that whether the long wave consists of epsilon or not. If long wave consists of epsilon, then you should be careful when you are removing the epsilon productions. Don't worry, if you does not understand, I will discuss with an example, okay, so that you will understand the concept in a better way. Then we have to eliminate the unit productions. Unit productions means in the form of A determines B, B determines C like that. So you have a left hand side also a variable, right hand side is also a single variable. Then these kind of productions we will call it as a unit productions. So we have to eliminate these unit productions and use less productions. Okay, some productions which are not useful for us, those productions we have to eliminate them. So, the simplification of context free grammar mainly consists of three steps. One is that you need to eliminate the epsilon productions, eliminate the unit productions and eliminate the useless productions. Then in the, we will discuss each one in detail about the steps in epsilon production, the steps in unit production and steps in useless productions. All these steps we will discuss and then we will take few examples related to epsilon productions, how it will happen and even to the unit productions we will take few examples and we will discuss and use less productions also we will take few examples and we will discuss so that you will understand the concept. Now remember one thing, the procedure of these three steps should be like you first if, you, if someone has given any context free grammar, first you have to eliminate the unit production. Then the second step is you have to eliminate the unit productions. Then you have to eliminate the useless productions so that you will get the simplified grammar. Remember this point. The order should be 1, 2, 3. That's why I have written the eliminations also. Epsilon production, unit productions and useless production. So, so now we will discuss each one in detail. Now we will discuss about what are the steps are there to follow to remove the epsilon productions. The first thing is that to remove an epsilon production. What is meant by epsilon production? A variable determines an epsilon. Is it clear? To remove A determines epsilon, look for all productions whose right hand side contains A. Is it clear? Suppose let's take that you have a production S determines A A and then A determines epsilon is there. Now, you need to remove this one, that is our objective. A determines epsilon, we have to eliminate. So, in the elimination process, to remove A determines epsilon, look for all productions whose right hand set contains A. So, in the entire productions of the grammar, you have to look at in the right hand set, anywhere A is there or not. Yes, here A is there. Okay. Replace each occurrence of A in each of the productions by epsilon. So, you have S determines A A, you have to keep replace, that's what they are saying. Replace each occurrence of A, here two times A is there, you have to keep the epsilon, okay, in each of these productions, add the resultant production to the grammar. So, you will keep epsilon here, okay, let me discuss, simple one, this one I will take it. So, you have S determines A A, A determines epsilon is there. So you have to eliminate this A determines epsilon, that is your point. So what is this thing? To remove the A determines epsilon, look for all productions whose contain right side A. So this is the production I have, right hand side, a variable, capital A. Now replace each occurrence of A in each of these productions. So what I will do is that, I want to eliminate this one, keep it this side. Now, this first A, I have to replace with epsilon. Then what I will get? I will get a A. Okay. If I keep this one also, I will get a S determines A. Because if I keep epsilon here, epsilon concatenation with A, you will get A only. And if you keep here epsilon, that is what they are saying, replace each occurrence with an epsilon. Here first I have replaced, I got A. In this A, I have kept an epsilon, I got A. Both are same, so I will eliminate this one. Because S determines A, S determines A, it is not useful. Okay. Now in both of them, if I keep, in both the places, if I keep epsilon, I will get S determines epsilon. Is it clear? So if I do the simplification, S determines A or S determines epsilon, I will get. Okay. So A determines E is there. 
now now i will not discuss how to eliminate this useless productions unit productions all these things first we will discuss anyway this grammar can be further simplified into s determines epsilon is it clear how i have done i will discuss in the coming video s determines a or epsilon a determines epsilon this is what we want to remove now if or i will tell it if you understand it is okay if you does not understand don't worry i will tell, discuss with an examples now if you say that is our object to a determines epsilon is there in the context free grammar now when i remove this one then only i got s yes determines a or epsilon so i need to remove it now if you see that s yes determines a but there is no production or no derivation for a because we have removed only one production is there belongs to a which we have removed so obviously it is not there so s yes determines epsilon then you can ask me sir s yes determines epsilon that also you should remove now if you look at it i think everyone know what is the start symbol in this grammar the start symbol is s yes, because we have taken the grammar as s yes determines a a a determines epsilon the start symbol is s yes. if you get the start symbol as epsilon you should keep it meaning is that your long ways consists of epsilon symbol also if your long ways consists of epsilon then you should not remove it is it clear so if your start symbol generates an epsilon you should not eliminate it that's what the step i have discussed so while eliminating the epsilon productions you need to follow the steps and please remember this point if your start symbol producing the epsilon keep it is as it is you don't eliminate that epsilon production because if the start symbol consists of epsilon meaning is that your long ways consists of epsilon then you should not remove it i hope you have understood how to represent a type 2 grammar and why should we follow the simplification procedure and what is the steps in epsilon production in the next video i will take few examples related to epsilon productions and i will discuss the concept so that you will understand the concept in a better way thank you so much